Our next speaker is um, Su Susie. Do you go by? Okay, Susie McKee is a hypnotherapist. If whoever can stay around, we're, she's just going to be uh, about 20 minutes because we're going to be we have to be out of here by 10. But anyway, Susie McKee is a, a hypnotherapist, personal trainer, designer, and a foodie. After working on the recent California campaign to label GMOs Prop 37, she's been committed to helping people become more aware of what's happening to the food supply, ecosystem, and our bodies as a result of GMOs in the food system. Susie McKee. I might go crazy here for a minute, but uh, I'll get I'll get the hang of it. Oh wait, I, how can I use this one? Can I put it on me? Do I have to use? I need a hand. I need a free hand. Unless you want to stand there. Best. There we go. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to try to speed this up. Um, I'm going to have to use my glasses, so pardon me, Ma. Um, but I want to tell you a little bit about GMOs and why we've been eating them for 20 plus years and not knowing anything about it. Some people know. A lot of people don't. But I want you to be even more informed than you already are, if you do know. So. Um, uh, I worked with other dedicated people like a mad woman on Pop 37 and realized we were outgunned early on by the advertising, so decided that education was going to win in the end. Now, <laughs> so let's hope that I hit the right button here. There we go. So what is a GMO? What I'm referring to now is um, pesticides and or herbicide genes that are placed into plant DNA. So everyone has eaten a GMO, they just don't know it. At least more than one. So um, Roundup is one of the main weed killers. Uh, other pesticides are used for things like that worm we see there. That's to sort of help you visualize it. So what is a GMO? Genetically modified organism, an organism in which the genetic material has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally. Am I blocking the screen for everybody? Am I? <laughs> OK, <laughs> just on to me. Okay. So let's look at what happens uh, to make this come about. So here's just a little, for people who may not know, some of you may know all of this better than I, but this is the basic, um, basically what happens. This diagram is representing the gene that's inserted. That's this, there's a, there's a pointer, but I, let's see. There we go, there we go, yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's called the transgene or gene construct. Let's say scientists want to create a corn plant that produces its own pesticide. They typically take a gene from bacteria that produces its own pesticide. The bacteria are called Bt, and the pesticide toxin it creates is called Bt toxin. If you take a pesticide producing Bt gene from the bacterium and put that inside the corn by itself, it wouldn't work. Plant DNA is normally designed to turn genes on and off as um, needed by the cell. But there's no corn on Earth that has ever had this Bt gene before the advent of gen genetic engineering. The corn plant does not know how to turn it on. So scientists attach a promoter, usually taken from a virus, that's this thing right here, um, which acts as an on switch. It turns the gene on 24-7. That's actually right up there. This Bt gene is not under the control of the DNA. It's under the control of the inserted viral promoter. So, then the next thing that happens is they make millions of copies of the transgene, which is kind of fun, 
um, which are either shot into millions of cells with a gene gun or infected into the cell by bacteria. The hope is that some of the genes make it into the DNA of some of those cells, but they can't tell which cells have taken up the transgenes. So it gets even worse. They do the following. Um, before they multiply that inserted gene construct, they add an antibiotic resistant marker gene. This is antibiotic resistant. So that way, this new gene creates a protein that protects the cell from a specific antibiotic and makes it immune to that antibiotic. Then they douse all the cells with that same antibiotic, and the only ones that live through it have picked up the transgene. Thus, they know for sure this one has picked up the transgene, and that's the genes they're after. after. They clone those and insert them into the plant. So now you've not only got this thing that has never, ever been on Earth before, but now you've got a virus attached, an antibiotic marker attached to it, so the antibiotics won't work. OK. So um, because the gene is bacterial, uh, when someone eats it, the gene travels into the gut, speaking of guts, which we've been doing, and which is the first line of defense of the body, and can be picked up by their own gut flora. I mean picked up. I don't mean just interact. I mean start to become one with. Um, and remember, that bacteria is now resistant to the specific antibiotic, and you can imagine what havoc that can create. Transgenes might also interfere with our own cells in other ways. In a German study, fragments of non-GMA DNA fed to pregnant mice were found in the brain of offspring. Other studies have also found some DNA from food does travel through the body and ends up in various organs. Because originally they said, oh no, it'll be, it'll be um, destroyed by the digestive system. It's not. So let's go to the actual... Uh, Oops, I got something out of place here. But anyway, so yeah, this is a little bit of the history of how this came about, because that's what's really interesting, too. How do we get this in our food system? You didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for it. None of us voted for it. So the next three slides are going to show that the scientists warned the FDA administration that this was not a good idea. In fact, it was a very bad idea and a very dangerous idea. So here's the FDA toxicology group saying, I'll let you read that, because I want to kind of go through this. Um, they recommended testing every GM food before it entered the marketplace, the Division of Food Chemistry and Technology, because they knew that increased levels of known naturally occurring toxins would be there. There'd be appearance of new, not previously identified toxins, increased tendency to gather toxic substance from the environment, such as pesticides or heavy metals, also undesirable alteration in the levels of nutrients. And let's not forget that antibiotic stuff. So, so one of the, uh, the director for the Division of Anti-Infective Drug Products said it'd be a serious health hazard to introduce a gene that codes for antibiotic resistance into the normal flora of the general population. Now, let's, for, let's not forget, this goes everywhere we go and then some. You know, I used to get the city's compost, and then I started realizing that compost has got GMOs in it. I'm not getting that anymore. I mean, you, you, it's like you have to really, oh my God, what can I do? How can I escape this? Not easily. <laughs> so then the other part of this is, of course, that um, actually what's happened is that both insects and weeds that have been targeted are developing into new strains that are not affected by the chemicals that are being sprayed on the crops to kill them. So that now there's other, so it can be either other weeds or other insects, or it can be strong versions of that same insect and same weed that have now become predominant and take over and destroy the plants anyway. We saw that in India, the cotton farmers have committed suicide. One every, uh, every 30 minutes was committing suicide. Um, so, and now, so they have to spray more and more of the herbicides and the pesticides. It's, a, it's like second grade science gone awry. So, um, and even the, the weeds in some of the cornfields have become so tough, the tractors can't get through them. It's, it's unbelievable. So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so the agency sciences, scientists warned about allergens, toxins, new diseases, nutritional problems. That's the other part of it, the nutritional side of it. They, they, they don't even know for sure what that's going to do. Um, so you can see that the overwhelming consensus among the agency's own scientists was that GM foods could lead to unexpected, hard-to-detect side effects. 
uh, including allergens, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. The scientists urged their superiors to require long-term safety studies. But guess what? Well, that's later. <laughs> no, they just got sent to Montana or somewhere like that. So the FDA, in its infinite wisdom, declared that the agency is not aware of any information showing that foods derived by these new methods differ from other, food, differ from other foods in any meaningful or uniform way. 1992, okay? So this is really interesting when you start releasing. So here we go. So at the end of this meaningless exercise, the FDA provided a letter to our confirming that the biotech company, such as the big kahuna, Monsanto, has concluded that G, um, GM products are safe. And what they said is that if you, Monsanto, say your products are safe, then, oh, they must be safe. And can you imagine? This is a regulatory agency. This is, and this is, the, so you can see, I mean, I'm not going to read it all, but you can see what they said. It's quite remarkable. Okay, and here's, here's, here's Darth Vader. So, who overruled the scientists? Among them, Michael Taylor, the FDA Deputy Commissioner for Policy. He looks so innocent. I love this picture. He just looks like such a schoolboy. He's a former Monsanto attorney, later Monsanto vice president after he did this. Now, now he's, the, uh, he's the food czar, <laughs> right now, as we speak. So, um, so it, this is so interesting, because they wanted the seeds to be declared um, substantially equivalent. So they're saying that this food that's produced by these seeds is the same as natural food, right? That's what that means, basically. And yet, what do they do? They patent these seeds. How can you have a patent on something that's that close to something that's natural? There, please, <laughs> don't ruin my show, okay? <laughs> All right. Um, so they patented these seeds. So now they can go um, and, and sue many of the farmers that happen to get them blown into their field, et cetera. Um, and this is, this is this part that really shook me up. Because in 1999, Monsanto to told Arthur Anderson, who was then their consultant, um, that they planned on owning every seed on the planet by 2004. I mean, that gives me chills to this day. And I've, I've read it and heard it and said it a thousand times. Every seed on the planet by 2004. And, you, and there's only one reason it didn't happen. Um, and we know what happened to, <laughs> to Arthur Anderson. So now we meet our reluctant Jedi Knight. From Darth Vader to Arpad, oops, <laughs> Arpad Pusai. Now we get the history of why Europe labeled, and in some cases outlaws GMOs in several countries. There's five countries that outlaw them, and they're 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 increasing every day. It's wonderful. And um, anyway, let me get rid of that. So, what happened was the UK, and back in 1999, decided to establish a protocol for testing GMOs to see if they were safe. This was back before, you know, Monsanto had their stranglehold. Um, someone had the harebrained idea it'd be good to do. So there was a $3 million contract that was, that was put out to bid and was awarded to this guy, Dr. Arpad Pustai, the world's leading expert in his field. Working at a top nutritional research institute in the UK, the Rowett Institute in Aberdeen, Scotland, part of their research included creating a GM potato that produced its own pesticide by inserting genes from the snowdrop plant. They also, so they had p potatoes that, that were GMO'd with this snowdrop plant. They also had regular potatoes, and they had potatoes that had a lot of pesticide on them. They fed all of these to, the, to different groups of rats. Um, and the only rats that had a problem, and they fed them baked, raw, you know, sauteed, all kinds of different ways. And they also fed them a balanced diet. And originally when I read this, I thought they only fed them potatoes. But no, they fed them a lot of other stuff too, which that really blew my mind. The other part that blew my mind, this is a 10-day study. So the rats that were fed the GMO potatoes developed potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, which I'll show you, smaller brains, livers, and guys, testicles. Partial atrophy of the liver. Talk about detoxing. <laughs> Forget about it, you know, I mean, there's nothing left to detox. Immune system damage, it's unbelievable. 
So, all right, here we go. So here's the stomach lining of the rats. Uh, you can the, the one that's large is the the one that was fed GMOs because it was going out of out of control. Um, with permission from his institute uh, director, Dr. Arpad Pusha, here's where it gets really interesting too. Was interviewed on on national TV and expressed concerns about GM food safety. And before he did his experiments, he was actually all for it until he saw what happened. So he, he actually said this, the sentence, I don't think we should be using our citizens as guinea pigs. And that got played on, on the TV. Um, it was actually like a two-hour interview, and they played two minutes of it, but that was in it. So um, he was a hero for two days at the Institute. Then two phone calls were allegedly placed from the UK Prime Minister's offices, forwarded through the receptionist to the director, not to Arpide. The next day, when Dr. Pustai came in to go to work, he was fired, and a gag order was, he was told he would be sued if he said anything to anybody. His research was uh, confiscated, his team of 20 scientists was disbanded, and the data was kept hidden. The Institute put out, put out a number of statements designed to damage his reputation and to support GMOs. The safety testing protocols his team was working on were never implemented. This is really interesting because it shows how fate turns. I actually get emotional about this. <laughs> because, because of the fact that, that he got to say that on TV, the uh, parliament wanted to see him. They, they, they called him in. This was seven months later. Remember, Monsanto's, this is still 1999. Monsanto's uh, idea of a good time is owning every seed by 2004. So they are fighting like mad dogs to keep, any, to keep him out of the equation. Um, so there's a, about, about seven months later, uh, there's a press conference at this Rowett Institute in Aberdeen, and the entire European press court, well, probably not the entire, but a great many of them are there because they're really interested. They've been trying to get Arpad Pushai to talk about this, but he says, I can't, you know, they'll sue me. So the, the director happens to announce that the gag order has been lifted because he's got to appear in front of parliament, so he's got to be able to talk. The entire press corps, sorry people, but I get emotional about this, gets up and leaves. So, I mean, you can imagine the, <laughs> the look of surprise on their face. It's, it's such a movie, I mean, come on. Where is George Lucas or somebody? Um, so they get up and leave, and they go to his house, because they've been bugging him, actually. They know where he lives. He's, he's not far from the Institute. And they say, OK, here's, and they take a piece of paper and say, look, the, uh, the gag order's been lifted. It apparently takes him a couple times reading it, to be sure. And then he tells them the story. He tells them what happened. He tells them this. Oh, wait, you got to go back. Not ready for rat testicles yet. <laughs> Sorry, I, I blew my. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, my, um, okay, okay, so um, anyway, at, at that point, the gag order's lifted, he tells Parliament, and did we hear anything about that? Nada. The, the European, okay, the press, then um, the first week, they printed 48 column feet in the European press, which is quite a bit. The first month, it was 750 articles, and the Europeans said, uh-uh, we don't want to do this. It took, I, I'm not sure how many months, for one of the main companies that manufactured food in Europe, it's a European one, not, a, not an American one, to say, oh, we're not using any more GMOs. And they got the labeling. Or, or they got labeling, and then this, country, this company said, we're not using any more GMOs. It's too hard. You know? so, but to this day, Nestle, Schweppes, the big multinationals, they send stuff to us that is GMO'd. The very same product sent to Europe is not GMO'd. They go to that much trouble to keep giving us GMOs. That's how much power Monsanto has, for one thing. Are we ready for the rat testicles? <laughs> so these are all done in other countries, mind you. We, Monsanto will not allow anything to be published that is done in this country. It's only the Europeans. So this is a Russian scientist. So here's the rat testicles, the control, and the GM soy. You can see they, they, they say they turn blue. I'd say that's dark purple. If you look at the, um, at the slides, well, you may like that burn, but probably most people don't. <laughs> OK. And this cell structure, if you look at the cell at the slide, you can see the cell structure. OK, here, this is really interesting. So this looks like mom and, and kid, right? 
These are both 19-DL rats. The small one's mother was fed GMO soy. Whoops, I got rid of the wrong thing, hang on. <laughs> so you can see the, the size was dramatic. Remember the brains, the livers, everything was smaller? Okay, so this is just showing rat livers. This is all you medical people in here can maybe get a kick out of this one. It doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but um, I can see that one side looks a lot less uh, even and controlled. So here's the U.S. crops. This is the, this is the bad news, and this is not even all of it. So corn, soy, cotton, and canola. Everybody say that. Corn, soy, cotton, and canola. One more time. Corn, soy, cotton, and canola. What do you think is in every, every, every oil in a restaurant that you go to? Start asking at restaurants. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have maybe any one of those or all of them or some combination of those. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, also, the, you know, soy and corn are in most of the manufactured food in one way or another. All the corn syrup and things like that have, have also, are also there. So it's pretty huge. Papaya, Hawaiian papaya. I mean, the Hawaiian people over there have been doing some uh, terrorist activities to get rid of that Hawaiian papaya. Sugar beets, 2008. This, uh, this first stuff was done early on in the 90s, but the sugar beets weren't done until, until 2008. Until, I'm trying to hurry. Until 2008. So, but 95%. Uh, sugar, if it's not cane is, or organic, is is that zucchini? Some zucchini and a yellow neck squash. So so you have to buy that organic because you won't know. Sorry, I'm in the way. I know. Okay, let's move on. Oh wait, there's more. Oh alfalfa. I mean, it, you don't need alfalfa, but if you eat alfalfa sprouts, you want to eat ones that are uh, definitely that are organic, and you don't want to. You want you know this is gonna. There will be no organic meat or dairy in probably about five years because alfalfa is not a plant that does not spread its seed easily. So it's going to infect. That's the other problem. All these plants are going to infect every other plant. Water, it's in the water. It's everywhere, people. So that's why this is so very important. So how do we avoid them? That's what I want you to know. And I want you to know about GE Salmon, and I have a little flyer over there. It's not as colorful as some of the ones. There's activities going on about GE Salmon. The reason I'm hurrying is because we have to be out of here by 10. That is the takeaway. You've got to take one of those so you'll know what to do about this next. So what you want to do is look on the internet and get the non-GMO shop, non shopping guide. You can also get an app for your phone that'll tell you. Uh, it's easy to find, just, just Google that or you know whatever you do in the app store. So buy products that are labeled non-GMO, which are happening more and more. Uh, you can use the non-GMO shopping guide. Just buy organic. That's really the only way to go. For one thing, that supports the organic food industry and certainly stay away from those at-risk products. So here's the, here's the thing. 90% of the people polled want labeling. False advertising cost us the election on 37. We educated more people that, that you know than I've ever seen, probably, in a way. And that was great. San Mateo County uh, passed it. But the outlying counties that only saw the ads didn't know, didn't know the difference, and they lied. The, every single ad had, had at least one or two lies in it. So let's connect the dots for all of us. Do not eat corn, soy, canola, or cottonseed oil. So that means go to a restaurant, ask them, salad dressing, you've got to have oil and vinegar. You've got to see almost all the salad dressing. You think you're eating a salad, okay, I'll be as good as possible. Ask them what they, what they cook their... Um, they're whatever you, you, buy, you get that is cooked, you know, meat, uh, blah, 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 chicken, fish, whatever. See what they cook it in. Ask them to cook it in butter or olive oil, something to that effect. Ask grocery stores, Trader Joe's. I mean, I ask them about once a month. So, what's your, you guys don't have any GMOs in your house, Ben, is that right? And they go, yeah, yeah, no, no. How come you did that? Talk, talking to people, make them realize that you know what's going on. And, I mean, I've, my friends laugh at me at a restaurant because I will have them going back and bring, you know, bringing me salad dressing that's not the stuff that's made with GMOs. What do they cook it in? We, we went out to eat and had them bring the whole thing. The cook comes out from the kitchen with this whole thing of oil going, oh, yeah, it is. It's, half, it's partially canola and partially olive oil. And this was a really good, you know, a, a really supposed to be a really healthy restaurant. Don't believe it. Ask everybody. Um, Global Day of Action is February 9th. We're going to have a rally in the city near the uh, Embarcadero. 
that's why you need to take one of those sheets over there. I have sheets left over from the election. Please sign that, sh that uh, sign-up sheet if you can work on this at all. We need people desperately, and you need to do it. We have until February 25th, as I said before, to get your comments and actions to the FDA. Support other states. Right now, Washington State just uh, got all their signatures. Vermont, Connecticut, New Mexico, and Oregon are starting. 18, 19 states have tried to do this through their legislature, and what happens is Monsanto says, if you do that, we'll sue you. And that's why we did it, California did it through the initiative process. They couldn't sue us, but they will try to sue. But Vermont says, we're doing it anyway. They've tried it a couple times. I think they figured out a way. So how do these people do that? How do they get patents? And that's how they, they do the suit. It's like interstate commerce or something to that effect. It's a patent problem. And I don't want to step on anybody's political toes, but guess who helped write those patent laws was Mitt Romney. Anyway, OK. so. Start a conversation. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's true. Start a conversation, talk to people, talk about GMOs. Get a I have some extra buttons, wear crazy buttons, have them say, what, that election's over, what are you talking about? Do anything you can, stand on your head and, you know, whatever you can do to get people talking about it. But please take that information to the far left of the stage, there's a little half page that shows you what's going on. GE Salmon, people, this, sorry, I, <laughs> this is so important because these salmon are not only are they going to ruin you know the best food on the planet that's a that's of animal source that's the only animal source practically that I will eat but they also these salmon are terrible they found that when they the, the Canadians did experiments with them found that when they did these GE salmon for one thing they're bigger they get bigger much faster the male salmon like big females they're going to try to mate with them and they're sterile if they get into the ocean they're going to have a breeding you know they're going to have a breeding bunch but if they get into the ocean, it'll kill the salmon population. But the other thing is they also found that they became cannibalistic when their food supply was low. They ate each other and other fish, so they could destroy the entire, I mean, it's like cockroaches, cockroach city. I don't know what else to say. Everything's becoming a cockroach because of GMOs. Yes? I don't get it. Okay. Okay. And that's why there's a rise in cancer from those babies because it suppresses their own ability to suppress cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I mean that among all the other, among the things, the thing is we don't even know what it can cause. We know it causes allergies, we know it causes lack of some of the food, the nutrition uh, profile goes down, so I mean it's, it, it's, so, it's so bad. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, this is fun.